I know you've built two of these. How long would it take an average builder to put one of these together? If, I, if I've never built an airplane like this and I got interested in it, how long would I need to uh, do this, On, you know, part-time? Well, a working person just putting evenings and weekends, um, it would take a person at least two years, over a period of two years, to uh, finish up things. Uh, even then, it uh, that's working very hard uh, and diligently. Um, there are a lot of a lot of things that you learn going along. And interesting, I've worked on cars, you know, and auto body trade ever since I was just out of high school, uh, first year of college. In fact, in '61, I went to to work in a the auto body trade. And I've had cars apart uh, through the years, from bumper to bumper. But when I started in on the electrical system of this aircraft, I uh, scratched my head <laughs> a long time because you're creating it uh, from nothing, no patterns, actually. You're just wiring it uh, direct uh, with your own uh, schematics and uh, your own plan because every aircraft you put in your own instrumentation that you choose and if you want to have a starter or start them by hand and a charging system and a separate electrical system and the redundancy or backup that every aircraft should have it uh, two of everything to have safety in the air most people would understand that and appreciate it maybe and uh, so it really that was one thing that I had to admit that nearly stumped me, and I, I was so got because I thought I could wire up anything, you know, wire houses and uh, cars, and uh, but to just plan it from zero, ground up, really took some uh, head scratching. It did, and even on the second one, I was at a loss again. <laughs> Bill, this airplane is a fabric-covered airplane, uh, built over. A, uh, a steel frame? Uh, yes, Ray, the uh, process is not necessarily stits. Some people are familiar with that as a um, famous name, but Seconite, it's a heat shrink uh, fabric that's extremely strong in space age products and uh, glued on to the structure or framework of the plane, then shrunk by heat, uh, iron, and uh, actually a uh, heat gun and then uh, the process I used was automotive finish of course because being familiar with that it's a new base coat clear coat paint and uh, the primer with flex agent and it's become a very durable uh, finish a lot like the urethane paints that they're using on modern experimentals and uh, I found my familiarity with the automotive paints uh, landed perfectly to that so I uh, was able to accomplish a beautiful finish. Well Bill the paint it just looks like it's that deep it's it's beautiful. How many processes I mean you put the raw fabric on and then you have to fill that fabric what's it take to bring it up to the final paint? Well like you said the the weave of the fabric had to be filled with the primer and then I did sand that carefully by hand once and primer it again with a thin coat, sanded that the uh, second time and then uh, the base coat, two coats of base coat and also a, uh, a uh, final finish of clear coat, two uh, coats of clear coat actually gives it the depth and the gloss and the flexibility and durability of an automobile finish which is uh, exactly what we want. Bill, the brake system on this airplane a little different than the the standard airplane that we fly today. Yes, brakes are interesting to people. Most people think of stopping only and uh, our purpose partially for brakes in a plane is doing our run-up or stopping on taxiways and uh, before takeoff, not just for landing and getting stopped in the end, but uh, 
My first airplane I put uh, differential braking, uh, it was heel brakes instead of toe brakes and I could uh, hold one and give a lot of prop and uh, turn quick but I found that the large rudder and rudder control and nose wheel steering I didn't really need so on this plane I just put a, a single handbrake um, to hold and to stop and it, it works great. A little bit about you Bill I think you're an interesting fella you really wear two hats you're a businessman you've been in the body shop business for a long time you operate a business over here in Switzer called Thompson and Son Body Works and also you you are a ordained minister in the Wesleyan Church and uh, and soon to be the full-time pastor at Nelson Street Wesleyan actually I've been a bivocational minister for all of my life uh, it seems all of my married life and uh, we've uh, pastored different churches done evangelistic work and uh, also worked on the side to support the family and uh, I found that a real joy you know to do that but uh, my son youngest son is taking over Thompson and Sons in uh, Switzer and I'm retiring <laughs> to uh, full-time uh, pastoral work at Nelson Street and I find that a real joy the most beautiful situation I guess a guy could ask for in life you know this is a beautiful day we couldn't have a better day to come out here and we appreciate you letting us come out here on on your strip and and you telling us about this airplane and uh, uh, I know you're excited about really this uh, going into the ministry full-time again is is almost a new start for you now. Yes, it is. I'm still young enough. I shouldn't say retiring to the ministry. That sounds bad, but uh, getting fired up to go at it, you know, full-time. And uh, it's a joy to my family, too, to see me slow down a little bit from the shop and assume more responsibilities there. And uh, physically, you know, when you get up and you're later 50s you need to sort things out and choose one or the other so it's a forced situation in my life so. well, I know you're very active uh, any plans in the future maybe we got another airplane coming down the line sometime well yes probably a person that loves to build will always uh, and I have one in my garage now that I'm repairing for a man and recovering and I've uh, been asked to build planes by different men but uh, time doesn't permit that just something about an airplane in there bill there is you know, it's a lifelong love and uh, my wife appreciates me keeping it as a hobby and uh, it's a diversion for me and a real outlet to uh, not just an outlet for pent-up energy but it gives you relief and release and different perspective you know you get up and see God's creation from a great perspective and uh, your cares kind of wash away the higher you get <laughs> you know uh, when you fly you look at this great country that we live in and this this the beauty it couldn't have just happened could it no it's no accident it is a beautiful creation <laughs>